Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Boy, we've got a lot of stuff to film this week to uh, catch up on some of our... our we took a little bit of a, a Easter break, so now we're back and we're going to be filming all week long. Got a lot of stuff to film. We're into the spring, so I'm just going to do a, a spring composition with you. I also have a, a seascape over there, a landscape. We're going to paint that little bunny right back here, right there for uh, my granddaughter, maybe with some daisies and stuff on there. So we have a a lot of things, a lot of fun things that we're going to be doing this week. What I have here is a board that's uh, 16 by 12, and I, I've just kind of roughly sketched on, I, I know it's very rough, <laughs> but some uh, blossoms, maybe some daisies, and tulips. I have a, I, I this last year we planted 80 different uh, tulip plants out there in the front of our uh, our gallery out here and they're all coming up and I want to paint some of those. So I might paint some tulips. Do some lovely uh, spring type colors. Uh, I think this will be kind of a fun uh, composition. Uh, so it's just a board and then I gave it a coat of white. My colors that I have out here are the hair to kind of sprinkle them out and around. I'll put a list of all the colors that I use here in this painting in the video description and in the video description you'll find links to a lot of other stuff okay all right let's just let's just go have some fun i'm going to take a two inch wide brush um this used to be my old varnish brush and then it got a little too old so now i use it for painting and i'm going to use some water here let's take a little bit of our sapphire blue a little bit of our phthalo blue some white down here we'll do this kind of thin here real thin and uh, I like to kind of push, I, I mean, I love contemporary backgrounds, pushing colors around like this, leaving some of the other colors around. Sometimes I really like this, uh, you know, watery type of effect. You see artists do that quite a bit these days, you know, this, this lots of water of it bleeding down and stuff. Just gives you all different kinds of looks, and it's kind of fun. Um, now, we're going to have some... You know, and I kind of look at uh, some of the things I'm going to do, some of the, uh, you know, yellows and, and stuff like that that I might use if I'm doing daisies. So let's just take a, a yellow oxide, maybe a little bit of Hansa with that here, and let's just put a splash of some of that color. Just touch it every once in a while out through here. Just This gives you a, you know, just helps you move color and gives you a little bit of color interest through the painting here so we'll just drop some of that color out here so if i have some daisies or even if i'm going to play a tulip you know i might even play that this might even be more of a violet tulip so having a little touch of yellow back here will help that tulip kind of idea come forward here now let's in, let's uh, deepen that color a bit somewhere around the center i like to always kind of deepen the color a bit you know you see me do that for contrast and stuff and i like to do those kinds of things and uh, so we'll just deepen that just a bit maybe even add a touch of red or like an orange a diolite in that naphthol red light just make a nice orange most of that right there is going to cover up because it's right in my center of interest so won't be too bad i just like i, I like ideas of color here let's just pull that down just a bit here and maybe a bit of water with that so it moves a little easier and we'll get just a bit pull that down down like that and uh, yeah just move that across a bit see I like that paper towel just hitting across it gives you that that real nice contemporary look you know that it's they're very, very popular for me as a, as a selling artist. This, these types of looks are very popular. And along that line, I got another question there about, you know, painting some of the designs, some of the stuff I show here at YouTube. And, uh, you know, free. we allow you to paint our designs, our des ideas and all that kind of stuff on it. You know, I do this to teach you guys. This is one of the things we do. You know, we, we like to give back to our industry that's been has blessed us so much so we allow you to do all that all we ask is on the back of the board you just put on their original uh in, you know inspired by a david jansen painting that's all we ask that it helps us protect copyrights and stuff like that but you can go ahead and paint this and sell this to sell it at your you know local art market and stuff and yeah go have some fun all right so let's come right back in here and let's take take some of that green maybe some of Hansa yellow and the pine green here which will make some lovely greens 
and uh, let's just push some of that color back out in here and I'll just do it very contemporary like this I'm not sure about leaves or anything but when I usually right around my center of interest I like to get an idea for color so let's take a little deeper green right out in here this will be a nice contrast here see that beautiful contrast and spring colors boy we could even put a little bit of that violet and stuff in there get wild get crazy you know get some get some colors in there thinking about spring and spring colors now i can take some of that off just a bit down like that see that gives you that nice contemporary look again right there and sometimes when i do that i look i, I start to think about traveling that color not just spotting it in one area where you might do it so we might touch some of this out into other things so my original sketch here is uh, kind of covered up now so <laughs> I'll just freehand a lot of it in here but we can do that so I'm going to take you know get some beautiful softer violets here sapphire and quinacridone violet a little bit of white so I have some extender medium out here in case I want it's all blue from my last landscapes if I want to extend it and thin it and then I have some open medium out here if I want to uh, you know um, um, do a little bit thicker technique I'm gonna start out though painting this mostly acrylic let's just start out with acrylic so we're gonna put a maybe a tulip up here and it's it's um, going to uh, and I'm gonna be very casual with my edges and stuff here like this with this and so I'm gonna blur these edges and stuff here and uh, not be too precise yet but I want to teach you guys a bit of the parrot tulip we did parrot tulips last year um, let me put a little bit of extender I use extender here not to keep it wet I'm going to use it to slide along the surface here of <clears throat> this particular tulip petal let's bend a petal out here like this yeah, that'll be pretty. That that bending petal kind of turns your eye back up over there. Let's take um, some of this green, some of all of this color here. We'll add a little bit of extender, and we'll do a, you know, this is a night. See, it's a beautiful kind of a grayed, dirty color that allows me to uh, kind of envision what a turned daisy or blossom is going to be up here. I'll push that back a bit there. So we'll do one there like that. And uh, let's come right, see this, so I'll put that tulip and stuff right back up over there, but let's do a larger one, maybe right here. Don't want to cover up all that violet, I liked that. So we'll push one right in there. This dirty color, and I do it with the dirty color because it carries all the colors of the composition, and I like that. Let's push, oh, I'm just gonna cover up that one little mark. Might have to make that again. We'll push another one right in there. Let's, uh, so right here I was gonna, maybe I'll push this tulip out a little further so I can uh, get another, maybe another daisy right in here as well. I'm just looking at, I wanna really fill this area up here full and uh, what we call uh, formal. And uh, you know, that gives me the best look I feel. Let's push another one right out here, like that one's gonna be falling down. Maybe uh, this really thin, idea of something right here more for color more than anything else here now before i get going too far let's just take i like to put on the the stems or movement so i'm going to take a little pine green a little dark here uh, a little burnt sienna and put on some stems which will show the movement here of uh of the daisies and and the tulips here and you know, there's, I like to have them in because it, the lines of movement, and I'm a big, I'm a big artist of movement. I love to paint movement, so we'll drop one down. Let's build this one up a bit. Maybe that one's going to come right down over here, right down into that area. So I can, I can expand and build on these. I might put in a big, you know, idea of, sometimes you'll see me just, Let's just take a little bit of this light green, very thin, some water in it here, and Hansa and that, and that pine green here, and just give the idea of a tulip leaf here. You know, maybe another one.
one's going to come out right out there like that. Very, uh, very loose. See, everything I'm doing is in, it's kind of dry. And see this? This is called a fracturing of the edge. That tells you that my paint's pretty dry. I have some water in it, but it, it's pretty dry. And so it is fracturing the edge, and that's what I want. I don't want it to be a, a real perfect, you know, a real perfect harsh edge. So I want that paint to fracture out. So when you want that paint to fracture out, you use a little bit less in your brush, or uh, you... Uh, Use it a little thinner here like this and just light pressure and it'll fracture out on you. Let's just take a, a bit of a darker so we can get that idea of that stem right in there. And that might just join right up down here into the stem. We'll bring that one down, maybe right in there. Yeah, that just gives it just some more color and something to work into there. That is going to be kind of kind of fun, kind of different. Okay, all right. I love these in, in, in our home that we have. We have lots of framed, of course, flowers and stuff. And we and I basically like to do this, go through and change them through the times of the year too. So different looks, the summer look and spring look is a little different. And it completely changes the look of your house, especially when you have fun little paintings like this that don't take very long to paint. You know, you can, uh, you can do that. So I hear I'll just break up some of these. If I feel my lines are too long, too straight. I cross them just a bit here with some other little, well, we get little vines and greenery and stuff, and that just uh, loosens it up a bit, loosens up the whole painting just a bit here. So I like that kind of movement as well. Okay, now, what are we going to concentrate on first? We have this tulip here. This guy's going to going to be here closer to the center. It's going to be more of our, our center of interest flower. Let's let's put a little bit of color on that, then we'll move over to the tulip. The tulip has a lot of the violets in there, so I'm going to want to carry some of these violets and greens. These are beautiful soft grays. Do you see that? And so I'll use that for some of my initial color coming in here into the daisy. Now this is, we'll do a daisy here. And so this daisy will go softly with the colors that we'll be picking up you know on this other one now we could do another white one we could do a yellow one right down through uh, you know right in there yellow and, and the violets would be kind of pretty so if we did shift one over a little bit yellow here maybe this one back here a little bit more yellow that'll put more spring color in and just kind of pretty. So all I'm doing is imagining where the center is and just pulling some color in and out. We'll put this nice yellow center in on that one here. And uh, maybe we'll make this one down here a bit more yellow. Long ways to go, but that'll, that'll get us there. And let's take some of this dirty, we'll let some of that yellow sit in my brush. Here's some of this softer violet. Let's move this tulip down a bit here. Here, we'll move one just right out here like that. Maybe this one isn't quite opened up yet or so. And we'll blur it out a bit. So we'll just take some of that off. We'll keep that one. We're going to keep that one really soft here. And that'll give me enough room in there to work another kind of a, a light, a, a lighter daisy right down in, right down in here. We'll, it, it'll be lighter for a second, and then I'll push it back here because I want this one to come up on top here. So matter of fact, let's just do that. Let's just take some lighter color, some more white, dirty brush though. See, model it in here. This is what I call a model brush. I don't like the color to be specific. You know, I don't like this all to be one color. So you look at your brush, you got all these colors. That's what I talk to you guys about all the time about having a modeled brush. And all those colors make it really pretty when you're, you know, painting a, something like this, okay? Let's get that a little bit lighter. And then I've got a lot of paint on there, which I don't always like to paint into when it's really wet. Uh, it's one reason why I don't use oils anymore. I like to paint, I like it to let it dry up just a bit, and then it's easier to paint. So I let it tack up, and so the acrylics, I'll let that happen. And that's that's what really kind of controls my idea whether I add open medium or extender medium or use water. It's how fast I'm painting that day, how long I want that, because I like the colors to tack here. So we'll take some of this light color. Let's push this up in and out of this uh, tulip out here. 
we'll paint that a couple times. That'll be our primary tulip up there. So we'll have yellow, yellow, and let, let's put this one up here, a little white as well. So we'll, we'll pull some lighter colors here, right back like that, and uh, maybe a few little light tips out here. We'll let this one sit very casual there, very, very casual. And let's lighten a bit of yellow, maybe a bit of Hansa and some of that white. Let's lighten some of our petals right here. Before We're going to light and shadow, light and shadow several times here. That's what's going to give us a lot of interest here. Let's put some of that, let's get some of that violet color from the tulip. We'll put it into these compositional flowers here. Now, that's one of the things I think about, carrying color, harmonizing the, the flowers all together. They can all be different kinds of spring flowers, but if they carry some of the same colors, different shapes will give you interest, but if they carry some of the same colors, you get a lot more pretty colors there. So there's a little sapphire and some of the uh, quinacridone. We'll push that in and out a bit. That's going to carry some of that see some of that color that's what we want let's carry a bit of there so a lot of you know i'm kind of shaping it up a bit but it's i'm working more for color does that make sense you know yeah i'll, I'll make my lights and my darks but i'm working more for color how's color going to relate in here all right let's get back to our our more of those those beautiful violets and stuff here that we're going to be painting this particular tulip with and I'm just going to, uh, so here's a, you know, a tulip, a parrot tulip has a main vein line that runs in the middle, middle of its petal. And I've painted these in so many different, if you want to see some super accurate, realistic ones that I do with the Dutch technique, you'll find those in the Dutch paintings here on the channel. This one I'm going to do, I'm going to do very, very broken, casual. I like that kind of look as well here. So... We'll just, but you, you imagine the center vein line and then these petals and stuff kind of come together here. But I'm going to break this up. So this is already getting just a bit stiff for me. So I want to break it up and add some other, let's get some more of the, the, the quinacridone violet as it shifts over to some of that blue and stuff there as well. That's kind of pretty. Let's get some light color into some of this yellow just a bit here, and we'll work this in. And so I just kind of follow that vein line. So this tulip, I want to curve out a bit. So I'm going to push in and out like this a bit, like that, as I build it. And lift the pressure, model your brush so you have lots of stuff going on. Let's model this one out here. So we'll, and then we'll model this one in and out a bit. It's going to take a few times painting it like this to get the look that I want. And uh, that's good. But this has a little bit of yellow in it, which is toning it just a touch as well. Okay, so then I'll come back and I repeat. I'm going to repeat some of those colors back into that again. And right now I'm painting pure acrylic because I want this to streak and I'm not to blend too much. So I'm just painting pure acrylic, which causes it to, to dry up. Now, if you want longer working time, a beautiful I think get a new paper towel here. Beautiful thing to add is that open medium. Matter of fact, maybe I'll do that just to show you guys. Just a little open medium. Let's go with some light. Open medium will also make your colors a little bit more transparent. I can do some quick little streaks and grabs here this color but it'll make it just a bit more transparent take away its power a bit so if you have a tendency of being heavy-handed with white you know you put your second you guys grab you know i did it for years second you grab white it starts to become opaque yeah you can stop some of that right now just by adding a little bit of this open medium here so we'll we'll and what I'm doing here is I'm building up like the front round part of the tulip right here. That's what I'm envisioning here. But I'm also leaving, doing quick little strikes here to leave some of the, the streaking movement. That's what I want. I'll go back here and revisit some of that 
and just streak right through there like that to leave some of that streaky movement. Just one or two brush strokes, not too many, you'll blend it here. So we'll just do a couple brush strokes. Let's get a little bit more of the violet. And see, I'm not adding any open medium to it, but you could, okay? I like that little violet touch right up there. That's kind of pretty right there. A bit of it pulling in. And so the parrot tulips pull in and have that lovely vein line look to it as you build those things going in and out and in and out like that. Let's go a little bit lighter. So you really, to make a beautiful tulip like this, you go in and out several times like this and building it and you get this these layers of movement here. You will just pull out here and get these beautiful movement layers. Now that's getting a lot of paint so I'm going to move over to this petal here for a moment put a bit on it maybe a bit over here onto this petal here and uh, maybe streak just a little bit of that quinacridone and stuff in there so that stays on there nice and soft. Here we'll just draw that petal out there just like that and maybe a bit over here and then I'm going to move back over to my tulips for a second so I can and see I'm just going to leave these colors just just like that very not blended, not like you see me normally paint, you know, a parrot tulip, okay? We'll leave it like that for just a minute. Let's maybe take a little open medium and we'll softly put on that tulip movement here onto this one down here. But see, we want this one, we'll just grab this ever so lightly, that idea of the tulip. And I... So I want to have some of that movement, some of the colors and stuff here, but I want this one to be softer overall. So I want to grab some of that movement. Let's grab a bit of this light and just work a bit, a bit of it in there, softer, see? So we'll keep this softer. We'll make it more interesting too. You have it, you know, big flowers have to have a certain amount of movement in there to stay interesting and stuff. And so we'll have to have a, a bit more in there or break it with the background. I'll show you that as well. Let's go work some of these daisies in here. Some yellows, beautiful yellows. Get all three of these yellows out here. And um, so we'll work these heavier ones here. So see that color's tacked up a bit. So now as I paint these petals of these of this daisy in and out here, the color sticks and stays really nice. And that's what I like. Now let's take a bit of red violet in that quinacridone, maybe a touch of that burnt sienna and we'll push the lower color and I'm just going to push that in and out, the shadow color of the center. Let's push that in because that's a, you know, I have to have it really kind of darker than that up there if I want this to be the center of interest of these, of this uh, painting right in here. So I have to have a lot of contrast right in here. Let's push in and out of that daisy a bit. Now, if you're painting in oils, don't use your hands. Use a brush. But uh, the, the heritage here is completely non-toxic. There's nothing in it. And and uh, that can give you problems or anything like that. So, but, uh, <clears throat> so I use that. And let's just drop a little bit into that one right there, because that'll be kind of fun. Maybe uh, just an idea. So sim more simple out there like that. So you can kind of see it starting to build here, right? Okay, so, and I do like that little streak of that that color that's right through there. Now, sometimes when I have, you know, something like this, let's take a smaller brush. I don't want to use my big one, but let's just take that blue and that sapphire and this color light, not exactly the same as I did onto the background already, but I'll pull through here, move some of these colors up like this and see that immediately starts to recede that edge. So, you know, I like, I like to do that. Maybe I'll streak that down just a bit more down this side 
here. Maybe a bit of that right over there. But see, it recedes that uh, flower. So, you know, anytime I want to recede something, I'll take that main color of that background and just drop it in there again. Let's push this a little softer. So we just add some light right to it. And it fractures that all up. And that's what I like. So, you know, and, and it gives me room to work even more. But see how it really softened that down. Now, you got to be careful. We can even take some of this blue and some of these colors here and just softly, you know, paint out just a bit of that dark color, which is causing that... Uh, tulip to have so much interest and you're harmonizing it making it more like the background there we'll let that dry up we'll work on these guys here let's take some of this nice soft color push that right into especially this violet this tulip violet here we we'll even put a little open medium in it right into there see color I, I watch color I really like to watch and, and paint color let's get a little thicker light Let's work on this front daisy right here, where we really want this one to come forward here. Okay, big old daisy here. You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, you can make it a double, you can make it, you know, there's all kinds of beautiful flowers too, Dianthus, all those, those spring flowers you can start pushing into, into this. Uh, you know, if you think a petal's too big, we can take it down, certainly. Here and in size and and everything so we have lots of things that we can do you're the artist we'll lay it on a little heavier right here right up there like that lay that in and I'll start to look for those you know casual edges and stuff here so I might divide this up into two smaller petals. And how do you do that? Well, you just take some of your greens, some of your violets, push back out here. Let's push back out. Because I'm painting for movement, more in and out movement. So we'll push that back out. Let's make these petals a little smaller here. So if you feel like they're climbing just a bit or, you know, taking over, overtaking your composition. Let's push some dark back in there. Get it to uh, really like it. Yeah. Now let's try those daisy petals. Pinch wipe your brush. Get rid of some of that extra color. Let's get this. Let's try these just a bit smaller here. So we'll put in some more. Some additional ones here. Like this. And see I won't even cover up all the 100% of what I did before. It's just really good movement, but now they're a little bit smaller. Let's uh, get a little bit more light here. And that's kind of pretty there. Let's go, let's go add some lighter yellows right in here. Up onto this one. Here are a few of those petals going in and out. A little bit more yellow over here onto this side. Here, a little softer. Let's go back to some, some lights. Light yellow here first. Back up over to this side. Here, work this one. There we go. And you know, not perfect. Just, you know, get used to painting them fast in and out and you know, they don't always have to be perfect. They're just little ideas are great. Let's put a bit of light yellow right out here. Turn on that little turned one out there. And we were going to do light up onto this one. So let's build that one a bit more. Just the idea. See, once you have one or two kind of perfect daisies that show a lot of movement and stuff you don't need to do all of them perfect just you know push some color in and out and they'll look great you know they'll they'll look really great because they you know they it's it's more casual a lot of you always say you get you know, how do you get casual daisies are something that can get really stiff you know right away especially if you uh, you make all the petals in and out exactly the same so 
you know, you get light, you get airy, and you don't worry about painting the entire petal. Let some of it kind of fade away. Let's take some of this softer color, push that in here. Okay, so it's like I'm restating some of that tulip color again. See it right in there like that? Just restating that, and again, that brings the harmony back. Because we've painted some of it out, you know, and that's what we end up doing. Let's take just a touch of that yellow streak. That See how that carries that color down, down over to that other one there. Okay, and let's build this now a little bit more light following kind of that, the structure there of the, and see this time I lift the pressure off, it's dried almost so, you know, I, I don't blend it quite so much so I can stroke it a bit. Then I'll just take some of the dirty pink here and just add some of it in there. You can push to, uh, you know, preserve. I, I took out just a bit. Don't you just hate that? Sometimes we just push too hard. Take that out. There we go. That's not so bad. So we get that pretty little tulip there. Tulip colors come in there. Let's drop in a little bit of light right in there. There like that. Let's push a bit more light right out here onto this one right onto those petals coming out of there we'll uh, push that more magenta right in here that quinacridone violet right in there that's kind of pretty nice big nice big tulip but we can have some of that light just touching that and slowly build that center here a little bit lighter. That's the roundest part of this tulip coming out here. And uh, then we'll, you know, technically like these little petals here, they would come in like this. That would be the veining. So we can do that, turn that, that look just a little bit here. That would be technical. A lot of times I don't worry about it, especially if I'm painting super casual. I just paint it and have some fun with it. And, uh, you know, then we go from there, all right? So we have that. Let's put a little bit of warm color right in here again. So we see some of the movement. We see some of the color carrying here. Here's a bit of the warm color coming right there. Now in... Uh, We'll come back, pick up some more light, and just hit that light. And this is now where I start to hit, you know, I try not to stroke too long with the color so that I'm putting on a lot of color now here. Following some of the movement that I said I stated earlier there. And here and there, pull that out. Pushing, that got too big. That got way too big here. We'll just blur that edge. That's what I like to do right there like that. Just blur that edge. That's, that's the really impressionistic edge that I like to have here on a lot of my paintings. I just take that damp paper towel. So I always have it in my hand here all the time. And I worked it. Now let's just take a bit of this violet and lift out. Just redress that, lift out. See, it lifts out that light right out of that center. I can push that around, but look at all the colors we have going into that center now. It becomes really pretty, doesn't it? Working that right in there. And as long, the, the big secret of that when you're painting something like that is that, look at here's my pure white and I'm working it down here into these colors. I'm not allowing, the, I'm not really painting with a tremendous amount of white. As a matter of fact, that last time I went around there, I didn't even touch over here, okay? So as I go lighter and lighter, I'm gonna head over here. Let's just go over here to the side that's closest to this little tulip here. And that's, that's the side I'm gonna use right there, okay? And I'm only gonna to touch it in a few places as I go to 
a brighter, lighter, or, or you know, a lighter light of white. And I'm only going to touch it in a few places. Maybe a little bit of a petal right out there. And that's it. Let's go to a, a little bit lighter, brighter yellow. And we'll use it in just a couple of places here. Onto this one here. Right like that. So I get, you know, it's it's the good rule of art. It's actually called, those of you that are study color theory, it's called the law of disproportionate color. As the, as the value or the intensity of a color gets brighter or lighter, the area in which it occupies gets less. That's a rule of nature. That's what happens. Let's take a little yellow, a little dark light yellow, a little Hansa yellow. Just work some touches of that and then we'll add a few little touches of lighter color right in there. But now it's just, I don't know if the camera can just pick up just the depth that's there into these little flowers now. And we could step out here and add other little marks or movements out here, you know, and break the edges. This is what I like to do is just break the edges and lines down. So, you know, maybe you get the idea of another flower or something. You know, I mean, it's very impressionistic and that's what I like to paint. So here's very impressionistic right through there. And, uh, yeah, so let's take, we got to um, get those centers into those daisies too. Let's take a bit of our burnt sienna and our, our quinacridone, maybe even a little bit of that red violet again. Let's reset some of that dark, not covering up everything we did before. Just reset some of that dark, maybe slide a little bit out here like that. That's what keeps them casual, you know is being able to take your brush and just dance it around like that to keep some of that casual color there. That's what we like. Well, that's what I like to do. And let me tell you, that's not, that's hard, especially if you're starting out, that's hard. It's a hard thing to do to just dance your brush in there and, and learn to let it go, you know? Let what happens, happens. This, that's not an easy thing. Not an easy thing at all to paint. Let's, um, Take some of this dirty color, pinky, a little light, maybe a little green, and and uh, burnt sienna here, nice gray. Let's gray down. See how I can gray down some of this pink color off of this one and, and gray that down, and it'll send it to the background just a bit more here. We can make it a softer appearing. So the color, color has weight to it. We know that is from color theory. Color has weight to it. And so I reduce the color, making the tulip more like the background. It recedes more into the background. And then let's blur that those edges. Now let's do some of this too. This is a beautiful technique, taking your palette knife and blurring the edge of something like that with your knife. See how it softens that edge and blurs that out. So let's take a bit of this blue and just blur it right into that tulip there. And uh, we can push back and forth, but see how it blurs that edge and softens that tulip out even more. It's a great little technique for anything that you want to kind of blur up a bit here and carry those colors through. Let's take a bit of green. Using your palette knife like this is fun. Just blur that in there like that. Just break those edges so it's not, you know, perfect. Let's, uh, let's do some more. <laughs> I, I love doing this. I really like doing this. This isn't at the end of the day, but I do love doing this at the end of my day. Play, playing and, and stuff like this with colors and trying some different things. Because I just, because I, I play and I discover things, you know, and I love doing that. Let's leave this just a little different blue here and just leave some of that right in there like that. That's kind of pretty right there. You can use it combinations of your paper towel. That works good. So this is a kind of a heavy area of green. I'll just break that. See how you just break that right there like that. 
and it makes it look like you know what you're doing. You know, it's really a lot of fun. And I'll come back, maybe here's a lighter green. Here, a little bit of blue. And maybe hit some edges, like right in here, a little bit more. This is the impressionistic part of it, there. And push just a bit of that. Or, likewise, you can use that, let's use a little green and a little sienna here. And push that in a bit darker right in there. You could use it for negative painting or or bright, you know, make yourself some bright greens here, bright yellow greens, and drop some of that color in here. That makes it pretty as well. Here, let's just drop a, you know, so if I feel like I go too vertical, sometimes I take a horizontal like that and then just break it up and down just a bit and change some of those color directions some of those visuals, those color visual directions here. And um, yeah, that works. Let's push just a bit of that right back there. And just a little touch. So you can see that center is building, you know, a little bit more and a little bit more. Let's um, come in here. The corner of the brush with some yellow oxide will build kind of We'll do the, I always call these crater daisies, where they have a little shadow in the center of them. Okay. So we'll drop this around, right like that. So using just the corner of the brush. And the large brush with the corner leaves you a nice casual nature, which is what I want. So a little Hansa, a little bit of light. Model that, don't mix it up too much on there, onto the center. Just, just use the corner of the brush here. And tap that around right like that and I know it's kind of losing its shape a bit hang with me we'll get there we'll touch some of that right around on this side so and usually what I do is I, I put on too much light and then I paint it out and uh, so I tap it back out with dark but I want to go a little bit lighter on some of that a little bit more Right in there on that one especially. That's my big forward one here. There. So I'll tap that around. Now I'm going to go back. Maybe a little green. A little burnt sienna. A little bit of yellow here. We could use violets as well. Here and I'll tap in right along the edges there. To sink that. Sometimes I push it in and out. If I want it to get really soft. Here. I'll push that in and out. Let's just tap a bit of that right down in there. Push that in and out. Push it in and out. If you go out into the petals a bit, push it in and out of the petals so that the petals, so it picks up the movement of the petals. Okay, don't leave it a big round circle out there. So if you go out into the petals, push it in and out of the petals slightly so it picks up the movement of those petals, see? Let's just tap a bit more of that right up in here. And, you know, real beautiful centers. We'll get this a few times. We'll go around a few times like this. Let's put a, I call it the crater daisy center. A little bit of that dark right back into the center there. Just like that. Maybe a touch of that light around. This gives you a beautiful little center there to your flowers. See, especially that, that one right there, which is the kind of the center of interest here. We'll push just a touch more there. There, like that. That's kind of pretty. So we'll take the corner of the dark here add just a bit more there and uh, maybe a little deeper there just the corner of your brush a lot of people say you know you get casual usually when I get casual I get bigger brush and um, use the corners that's what really gets me casual paintings use the corner of that brush here 
a little bit here to build up that. That's kind of pretty. Let's uh, lighten up those petals just a bit. A little bit more white. Got a bit of blue there, so I'm going to have to wipe off my brush. Let's go, let's find a clean area here. Go to, so we can get some brighter, lighter yellows here. Here we go, just little touches here. So I can switch off and start to add a little bit more light color to this because the whole feeling of this, this one here still is yellow. So, you know, I start to read some of those things and I can still use. Now, sometimes I'll pick up an edge like this and use that to draw an edge if I want to get a little bit more definition to the daisy itself or to the blossom that I'm painting. I'll just, to that edge, I'll just draw it over onto that edge and I'll do that here towards the end of this one so that I get, leave those edges here. But I paint them really casual in and out quite a, for quite a long time in the painting here. Quite a long time. Let's tap some yellows right up here, right into that. And as I get back here to these back ones, I work it a little bit faster here. Lots of fun ways to do, you know, some of these uh, some of these flowers. We can build, matter of fact, let's uh, do this. Let's build this up just a bit more here. And then I'm gonna switch over to yellow oxide, some greens, maybe a touch of burnt sienna and we'll push more of the shadow up over to this side. This will give the flower more body, more power, but yet the shadow will keep it softer, see? Let's do that over here. So I do this sometimes if I want the flower to have more body, but I don't want it to, in other words, more size, more everything, but I don't want to add more light color. I flip over to do the shadow on it and see the difference there. And then you can come back and maybe add a, a little bit of light to that side there. Here like that. that just yeah, it gives it a bit more of a sparkle there. But painting them back and forth like this is kind of fun. Now there's some that I do here on the channel really quick. And they are very, very fun. And you should practice those. Look through some of the, the channel here some of the real casual quick ones that I do that are really a lot of that and they give you a lot of confidence and, and stuff to try one that is a bit more detailed like this one you know that, that has a bit more stuff going on now let's uh, so I like some of those casualness of some of that going through let's uh, pick up maybe a little bit of a lighter stroke right through here on this one this is where I'll look just for the casualness of the painting now, just really super casual. So I'll put a strike of light. Let's put another little strike of light so I can give a bit of interest to this one that's down here without really popping too much more into it. Let's do the same thing here. Let's pull in some more light, pull this in and out, build this one up just a bit more here. And because it can, it can afford it. It can afford to have this on here. Just a touch more. And uh, we'll soften this out with some quinacridone and a little bit of light here. We'll just run that right into there and soften that one out here. And maybe I want to push this darker edge right back here. Do a little bit more drawing with that. Blur it off a bit. But gives the idea of a back pedal back there. Let's do something right in here that thins that out. But see, I just tap the edges. I don't really, you know, I'm not blending those colors together. I'm just tapping the edges. You can use some open medium to help it get a, a touch transparent here. Let's lighten that up a bit. 
you know, right through there. See, it leaves a bit of that streak, which is what I want in there, into that one. And I'll take some of that color. Let's just push it right into here. I hit that center of that one. That was not good. To fix that a bit. Yeah, just a bit. See, just a bit more contrast up there into the front. And now I'll take some uh, real soft yellow lights here. Just light pressure and sink that pink right into the flower there just by doing that. Push it ever so lightly. I like to do that. Pressure on your brush is really important. Don't, you don't, uh, when I first started this, I just always use a heavy stroke and no pressure is very important. So don't always use a heavy stroke. Light pressures, light pressure does nice things. Let's um, take just a bit of this right out to here. We'll give it just an, a little bit of an edge there, seeing it just pops that up. So you look at that, you got some nice, pretty spring colors there. Now, I could round up the, the bottom of that tulip with a little bit of white that would help here. It's a little bit pointed up, so the bottom of the tulip actually is a little bit more round. So I'll just round it up and see what that does to that composition. It rounds that up. So, But I don't always, you know, I, I may see it. Let's put a little green into that, carry that color right up there. See how it takes away just the green and pink. You know, color is such a big deal of everything we do, guys, as artists. And see a little bit of that light green right in there. That's really kind of pretty into that tulip. And also another color that's really pretty. So one of the things, and and into our MeWe group, when I talk to, you know, the link to the MeWe group is in the video description. But one of the things I'm addressing all the time with him all the time is harmonize your paintings. And so we have a lot of this beautiful blue into the background right over here. And so what I'll do is you can use extender or something. I just don't want the color to be very thick. You could use water, extender. Let's take just a little bit of the light blue and see, we'll touch it every once in a while into our, into the painting itself here. Let's carry just a bit of it right into there, see? And what that does is that harmonizes that blue like, like a few strokes right out here, maybe right in here onto this one, right there like that. It harmonizes that, um, that uh, blue right into the painting there, see? And I like that. Now, we could come in if we want to have any more, um, let's just say, uh, a little bit more contrast and stuff. We can, you can come in and negative paint, push that in, you know, push in some negative painting in there. That's up to you. You know, we talk about those techniques quite a bit here onto the channel. Let's take a bit of blue, a bit of that lighter blue green, which is pretty into a painting like this of Eastery kind of colors, spring colors. Here, let's touch a bit of that. Get the colors, get colors going. Here, get some of these, these beautiful colors here. Pull some of those out and down. There, like that, that's just real, real pretty. And get lighter, get lots of colors into your leaves and stuff. You know, that's, that's what makes them pretty. You know, set that one back there just a bit. Let's, um, all kinds of ways. But look at how that color now evolves through that tulip. And how many times did I paint that to get it that way, right? That's the thing. Now, I could even, I'm looking at it, I could even use just a touch more light right up there into the front, which really helps bring that right back again, right up there like that. So, and I could use this little edge here to pop that around and maybe so you know I'll, I'll do sometimes or maybe even a little pinky here to do a little suggestive drawing down into the here if I feel like I got a little bit too casual and lost that shape a bit too much there it's just kind of fun this is the 
the last little bit of the you know the working of it here and let's take a bit of that heavier calyx for that tulip right there and I just put that green spot in there which isn't it's not nice <laughs> so I'll take it out you know you got to have fun with it I mean these are fun these are fun to, you know to paint in the in the membership I started to show and I'm gonna and I got a great reaction to it so I'm gonna show some more I call them my end of the day paintings of what I do Ooh, that's kind of pretty look at all the colors that are in there the end of the day paintings what I do is I'll you know take my palette like it's right through here and I use it up by experimenting and showing some different things and I did some other flowers and stuff with that and and um, it came out really quite well and uh, so I'm going to do some of that I'll film another one this afternoon as I come to the end of my day you know painting here let's go with just a bit more of a Let's add some extender here. Nice yellow green, maybe a little bit of the blue into this here. Let's just take that color out here just a bit. See, I'm just working for that color. That's all I'm seeing, some of that, that color. Now, you could, you know, put other things. You can get it really, really busy, too, you know, but I want to keep this one just very soft, pretty little. Pretty little uh, painting here, you know, just real soft uh, as far as these contrasts and stuff out here. But you could put more on there. If you like a lot of contrast, you could uh, definitely do more. We can push that softer pink right back in there again. Just pick up a bit of that. Look at that pink and green right through there like that. See, that's just a pretty color, isn't it? Try some of these things. That's how they gets pretty. Try, you know, if you're a person or if you have a customer or, you know, maybe you're painting for a relative or something like that that loves this color, you know, add a few more little touches of that color and they will love that painting even more. You know, just uh, makes it fun. Let's get this just a touch lighter and maybe just a bit of that right out through here. Carries that color up. Nice, pretty color. All kinds of pretty things there. I could go just a couple strokes of lighter. Right, real quick. Right up there like that. Don't want to get too stiff, so we'll break those edges. But just real light. Fun. I, I you know, I paint daisies and stuff like this and, and tulips and stuff a thousand different ways. There's a lot of videos on the channel for you to, uh, you know, to try some of this kind of stuff and to look at some of this stuff. Now, remember, white is also a color. So white, you can, you know, especially with your background that's back down through here. If you want to, you know, soften and push more stuff around, you can push that white color around there, too. And that works just as well. Like coming right down through here, softening some of that and getting some of that nice, soft, nice colors there. So you can uh, do that. But look at it there. Camera one there is eight feet away. It does a pretty good job. And, uh, uh, you know, you can look through the channel, though, at all different kinds of flowers that I paint in all different kinds of ways. Even some of the more traditional blossoms that I have there, you can just pull out these pinks and greens and yellows, these light blues, and use those for some of these springtime colors that make some of these wonderful, uh, wonderful paintings, okay? And they're a lot of fun. And, you know, look at all the color. I mean, it's taken me quite a while building back and forth. And, uh, you know, and I painted it most acrylic. It's not blended. It's just one layer working into another one there. And, you know, to get that type of interest there, that's that. That's the beauty of it. And it takes a little bit of time. It took us just a little under an hour to paint something like this. You know, I'd like to get it to go a little faster. I might even uh, work this one just a, a bit more. Uh, just, uh, you know, maybe pull that one petal right here. I'm just looking at that. Pull that one petal here a little bit more up and top. Just a bit more light right there like that. We'll do that. Just blur those edges there a bit. And just it's just fun. It's fun to try it. Fun to to play with it and stuff, you know. And uh, you know, it's like I it's like I tell everybody in our group and my students and stuff. It's just a board and a little bit of paint. You know, I used probably less than 25 cents worth of paint 
in painting this and practicing it. You're not wasting anything. I get some people that write me and say, oh, but you're just wasting paint. If you're thinking about that, then you're not painting the right technique. You know, I used, I mean, you look at my palette here from when I had it in there. I used just a little bit of paint. I could probably paint 10 more off of this palette of painting this practicing like this. So get rid of that out of your mind and get that casualness and trying things. Get that, you know, going back in there again. And that's when you'll be more successful. Let's put a bit of the contrast back in there. <laughs> just, you know when you have fun painting something, you just can't stop, you know, and I should stop. But I'm gonna do this and it's gonna make it fantastic. Here we go. Just little touches, that's that little, the little life. I just love the little sparks of movement and life and stuff that gives it. There you go. Fun, okay? And I'm going to do a lot more of this, and we're going to have a busy uh, here, uh, you know, filming time coming up. Uh, also, one of the things I have been promising is, and I started out with that rabbit. Let's go over there. We're going to do that one. Um, is to show you how I do some of the drawing, the three different methods that I use basically in drawing. And I'd also like to talk a little bit about design because a lot of you like my westerns and stuff. And I have a lot of different ways in which I put those stories together. And I want to tell you about some of that. And we have some real fun paintings and stuff going up. So as we come into the spring and the summer, we're going to get more active here onto the channel. We'll start getting two and three videos a week and stuff. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those out, okay? And, you know, please do us a favor by hitting like watching as much of the videos and stuff as you can because YouTube goes on watch time. The longer you watch a video, not only the number of times, but the longer you watch a video and watch through, and I understand we're all limited with time, but when you watch those videos, it gives us a larger watch time and then YouTube helps us promote the videos to more people because it's a more interesting video and that just makes sense, okay? So help us out with that. Those of you in the membership, I'll put a nice uh, close-up photo of uh, this painting here for you. And so you can go over there and print it out and use it as reference and stuff like that. And if you wanna sell your painting, please go ahead and sell your painting, okay? Have fun with it. Make a little bit of make a little bit of money on the side too. It's really kind of fun. Art is a wonderful way to do that. You know, art, I've made my limit on it and a great living with art for over 40 years. Put my son through medical school and, you know, and my daughter works in the company and stuff now, and we're carrying it all on. So art can be great. You got to love it. You got to put the energy and the time and the practice into it, though, you know, to build that. And then get a little bit lucky about opening a door and, you know, getting shown to somebody who kind of makes your career. All right. There you guys go. Have fun. And I'll see you on the next one in just a couple of days. And I got to do that bunny. All right. Okay. See you then.